discovery have you awarded this year? Well, this year we've awarded a fundamental discovery in cell physiology for vesicle traffic, a major transport system in the cell. At the, at the press conference, I got the impression that this prize, people were a bit quiet. Was, had many people been waiting for this prize, do you think? Well, people have been aware of this work, you know, for decades. And, um, you know, the work started in the 1970s. And it's sort of built throughout the years. Um, so in some ways, I'm surprised that it wasn't, you know, more, more of an obvious choice. But um, so it's a fundamental discovery of cell physiology. And it was not entirely easy for these investigators when they started. So Schechtman, for example, did yeast genetics. And Rothman was doing biochemistry in a, cell, uh, in a test tube. And Sudoff was doing biochemistry and some functional studies with animal models. Could, could you explain a bit about the vesicular transport system for our lay audience, just right. in easy words? So think of a cell as sort of a factory, and it needs to produce proteins. And they need to shuttle these proteins in cargo from one workstation to the next, so each protein can get a little bit better refined along the way. The fundamental discovery here is how the packages, the molecules, the cargo, is shuttled from one compartment in the cell to the other and how these molecules can be also exported from the cell. So it's that process which we have um, awarded the Nobel Prize in. So what were, if you should, the, break, the key breakthroughs that make them uh, worthy of the Nobel Prize, the, those three gentlemen, what was the, the three steps? The three sort of? steps. So um, Schechtman used yeast genetics. Mm -hmm and he was studying temperature sensitive mutant yeast and he could morphologically with a microscope see that some of the vesicles in the mutant yeast were building up in certain parts of the cell and he understood that that disturbed the traffic and he went on to identify the genes that controlled this traffic that was a pretty bold approach because at the time people didn't necessarily think that studies of yeast would be of relevance for mammals. Rothman took a really bold approach. He studied this process in a test tube. Now that approach was met with some skepticism because people thought that this traffic would be dependent upon the proximity of the compartments with each other. Therefore you theoretically wouldn't be able to break up the cell because you'd need to have an intact cell. But Rothman broke up the cells and studied this in a test tube and he could show that even in a reconstituted system he could build up this interaction between proteins, the protein machinery, and study the traffic of these vesicles in broken cells. And Schechtman, when he came on the scene, I think he recognized that calcium could be a sensor. Sudoff, do you mean? Sudoff, yes, correct, Sudoff. Sudoff came on the scene, he recognized that calcium could be a sensor and he was faced with a situation where all the building blocks were unknown. And so his job was to really to put functionality and understand what are the building blocks that the calcium binds to and how does that release vesicles in a temporally controlled manner. Uh, the will of Arthur Nobel states that the prizes should be awarded to those who have uh, confer the greatest benefit on right, mankind. Right, right. So in what way does this prize uh, fulfill this criterion? Well, that's true for all of the prizes. Mm -hmm. And um, new knowledge about how we, how we are in the world mm -hmm. is of great benefit for mankind. Mm -hmm. This, again, is fundamental cell physiology. So the knowledge that we're gaining from this is applicable to all cells from yeast to humans, mm -hmm. showing how ancient this is. Mm -hmm. And what these individuals have done is they've uncovered this machinery, this mechanism, and that has allowed us to understand basic physiology, but it's also allowed us to have some insight into disease mm -hmm. progression and prospective treatments. So it's a pretty great benefit to mankind. With uh, prospective uh, treatments, in, could you just give an example in one area when this could be? Right, so understanding the treatments better would allow you to focus on the machinery and potentially come up with drugs. For example, diabetes. It's a disease where insulin is not released from the pancreas appropriately. So this is controlled with also the calcium impulse. So theoretically one could work in that area and develop pharmaceuticals to improve insulin release, 
Um, in tissues like muscle, you have an uptake of sugar into those cells. Theoretically, one could work on trying to target that machinery to have a better interaction of transport proteins to take up sugar and feed the muscle with sugar, glucose. Um, so there's a lot of examples of where this could be used. So why was this prize awarded this year? Yeah. Well, it's a long journey in terms of the vetting and how we work. And this one is mature, and we, you know, we, we felt that we had a fundamental discovery that was Nobel Prize worthy, and so this is why we're here today to talk about these laureates. Uh, since there are a lot of young people watching right now, how would you explain the importance of this prize to, a, say, like a grade school student? Right, right. Okay, so if you can imagine that you were going to go to school and you were going to take the bus, and the bus showed up, but there was no sign on that bus to tell you where it was going to take you. All the signs on the buses disappeared. So you'd get into the bus without having any idea of where it might take you. It might take you to your school, but it might take you to your parents' workplace. So imagine that. You'd be missorted, and that's a little bit what this process is. Because of this process, the passengers, the cargo, they get to the right place, the school, at the right time so you're not late and you don't end up at the playground or at your parents' workplace or somewhere else where you're not supposed to be. So this whole process helps the cells sort proteins so the information is moved to the right place. That's an excellent metaphor. Um, what, what's the state of knowledge uh, in this field right. at, uh, at this time? A little bit of what I said to you before. When, mm. when Scheckman started, people were skeptical of the idea of using a yeast model. Uh, people were unsure that you'd be able to really even do these experiments. When Rothman started, it was incredibly bold. He, he, he broke up the cell, studied this in a test tube. People were skeptical. They didn't think it could work. Uh, e even with the Sudoff work, you know, the molecules were not on the table. So when did the scientific community realize the significance of these findings? A scientist, I think, are clever to catch on to what's new in the field, and people have really been actively engaged in this area for decades. This is a tough area of science. It's been really a tough problem to solve. And so many individuals have been working on different parts of it. So if we turn our attention to the laureates, mm -hmm. um, James Rothman, Randall mm -hmm. Shackman, and Thomas Hudoff. Mm -hmm. Um, do you know them yourself? I don't know them at all personally. No? I mean, I've, met, I, I, I've heard James Rothman lecture, um, but I don't have any interactions with them and I'm not collaborating with them. But I'm aware of, obviously, I'm aware of their work. <laughs> and do you have any idea? I mean, those findings that are, are awarded today, a long time, you know, in the 80s, 90s, yeah. what, do you, what do they work on now? Well, the, you know, so some of the important work is even coming even today, you know. So we have some papers that have been published in the 90s and the 2000s that are really of relevance for this work. So all of them are active scientists, all of them are completely engaged in their, their projects, and they're moving these questions forward today. And um, personally, uh, what makes you so enthusiastic about this prize? Oh, I just think it's really fantastic. I mean, it's so beautiful. The organization of this traffic in the cell is just phenomenal. And the fact that cells really require this, otherwise they basically can't survive. Um, it's just phenomenal how cells are able to move this protein machine, proteins from one place to the other. So, I mean, I just think the cell biology, the cell physiology is really beautiful. And finally, has the Nobel Committee been able to reach uh, any of the laureates? Right. So, um, there has been a telephone conversation between Jaren Hansen and uh, Randy Sheckman and James Rothman. And Sudoff hasn't, we haven't been able to reach him. But we're in, we're in, we're working on it. So, what, uh, how did they react? Oh, you know, uh, very humbled, delighted, surprised. Um, you know, you know, I'm sure it's a, a moment of pause for them. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Lada. <laughs>